During World War II, Japanese Americans were removed from their home and taken to the desert. Come along with us while we look at what that situation looked like. Hi, I'm Christina. And I'm Randy. Are you ready for an adventure? Come see our journey. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, members of the Senate, of the House of Representatives, yesterday, December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The United States was at peace with that nation and at the solicitation of Japan was still in conversation with its government and its emperor looking toward the maintenance of peace in the Pacific. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt being tied up with war efforts assigned generals to recommend what needed to be done with the Japanese. Due to this, an order was signed to remove all people of Japanese descent from the area. They could only bring the clothes that they could carry. They left behind all their personal property and their pets. They owned a home, they had to leave it. Our journey today will take us to the Manzanar internment camp, located on Highway 395 in the California desert. As you approach this national landmark, the guard tower is a grim reminder that this was a concentration camp in the United States of America. This here is one of the lookout towers. As you come upon the camp, you look out across the area and you see the mountains and the desert. It is hard to believe this was home to 10,000 Japanese from March 1942 to November 1945, four years. At first sight, it looks like someone's summer camp but 10,000 people were kept here and could not leave. Even though this is a tragedy in the history of Americans, detainees and others have worked to make sure that this stays a national historic site for all to see. It is difficult to place four years of 10,000 lives into a short video. This is not going to be a short video and it may be long, but there are many things here that all people need to see. This is yet another one of those things that mankind should never let happen again. Manzanar was the first of 10 such concentration camps. It was bounded by barbed wire and guarded towers confining 10,000 persons, the majority being American citizens. Extremely interesting to explore the history of this place. The visitor's center at one time was the only building remaining, and it was the recreation hall where many events took place. It was basically the community living room. The site possesses national significance in commemorating the history of the United States of America. We're in the museum, they finally opened it. All the museums have been closed due to the pandemic and now this one's opened back up again to where people can visit and see what happened. It was a war relocation center for the Japanese. To welcome to Manzanar. There's the barbed wire against the display of the mountain. It was a sad time. It was one of our many histories that maybe we're not proud of. Because our Japanese friends ran the produce section in an open air market. They were there one day and the next they weren't. But I don't remember too much about it. These people except that they were always willing, always kind to us. Right here is what Manzanar looked like during the war. And we only have a, 
a few examples of buildings out here now, but these were like tents and they built an entire place to keep 10,000 people. This spot right here is the auditorium. That's where we are right now. So this is where, how big it would have been. With over 10,000 people. A monument was erected uh, for these people called a soul consoling tower. And these here, in this case, were the offerings that they had laid at that cemetery obelisk. Um, the majority of the people placed in the war relocation centers were under 18 years of age. And the conditions were the families occupied whitewashed horse stalls. These were ID tags that were issued to the families that they had to wear them and tagged to their clothing and baggage during the transportation to the camps. So you're allowed to take these tags and you find that person throughout or within the exhibit. And to give you an idea, you can see the children up there. They have their tag on them. So this is the family. The searchlight um, barrel above is to be from the Manzanar guard tower, which is up there on the top. Can you see that right there? Manzanar had a fair share of rights. It says Manzanar was a volcano about to erupt. Many people were filled with many hates about many things. Race hates, war hates, political hates, class hates, and just the common kinds of hate we all know too well. 10,000 lives and 10,000 stories. Everybody had a different story to tell. This here was what family life was like there. There was children villages, social workers, they managed the, the children, and then their little space in life around and they were able to make a chair and it says I felt the pain I felt in the shameful experiences of camp were for my children rather than for myself. The laws of the U.S. prevented us from becoming citizens but my children had been born and raised here and were always told to be good Americans. They were not able or allowed to bring their pets so this particular pet was named Snooky, and they left the dog at a friend's house. We would be glad to see our dog again. They were lucky because somebody took care of their dog. Other people had to abandon their pets. You might have found a new pet in Manzanar, like a lizard or mouse, stray cat or dog. But some pets are buried near the cemetery. They had gardens in the desert. Manzanar had some garden areas and they would try to grow things out here the best that they could but it was a desert area. Soldiers made sure no one left. One guy went outside of the barracks or outside of the fence to collect wood and the soldiers shot him. The toy loan center. They would loan toys for the kids to play with. There was just a few toys that they could play with and they would loan toys out. And the barracks area looked like this. Wood and tar paper were the barracks. And they were no match for the Owens Valley wind, dust, and extreme temperatures. The magnitude of the task the day before President Roosevelt signed an executive order, Secretary of War, Henry Simpson wrote in his diary that he had no illusions as to the magnitude of the task that lies before us. 
This wall is a list of all of our Japanese Americans that were here in this in internment concentration camp. Over 10,000. These are all the flags that were of all the locations of these concentration camps or internment camps. From behind the wire, the children have not seen a kitchen stove, a bathtub, a family dinner, table, or the privacy of a backyard for two years. Their poems, stories, and pictures reflect a barren world of watchtowers, barbed wire fence, tar paper barracks, desert flora, and high mountain capped with snow. They had to start over. After the camp, they had to start from scratch because then they had nothing. After Franklin Roosevelt was re-elected, he confronted the le legality of relocating the Japanese American citizens and he stated it felt by it is felt by a great many lawyers and under the Constitution that they can't be locked up in concentration camps because they're American citizens and American citizens have certain privileges and at that point they did away with the camps in 1988, President Ronald Reagan signed a bill that gave each person that was interned here $20,000 and a letter of apology. The fire department from Manzanar, they built a little bit of a wood structure, they put some tar paper on the outside, and they called it the fire department. And there it is. Here's the old fire truck. Oh, they got two old fire trucks. They got one over there too. Okay, this was the Manzanar Fire Department. The buildings were constructed for temporary use only of wood throughout. The sides were covered with tar paper. Needless to say, they were one of the greatest firehouses possible. And down below it says, kids will be quick kids. Uh, this little kid, Toby Williams, nearly sparked a disastrous inferno after finding a tin of gas. Wow. So there was a fire at Manzanar. It says 91 fires. There was 18 in the mess hall, 27 in the barracks, 22 in other buildings, 21 grass and brush, 3 vehicles. The way the buildings were made. Just a little tar paper on the outside. Good luck keeping warm. They put the basketball court back up and they've got replicas that they built that show they were basically two by fours and tar paper on the outside. A couple of years after they were built they went back in and uh, put in exposed drywall to the insides and that gave a little better insulation. Uh, this would have been uh, block 14. Each building area had a different block number. The handicap ramps are part of the modern museum. We'll take a walk to each one of the example buildings. The first one's going to be block manager's office. I'll also let you listen to some of the wind noise that we got to deal with. This would have been the actual entrance here in the middle. This is a picture of people going into the block houses and this is the way that the block houses looked. The camp administrators had block managers to act as liaisons. Block managers were chosen based on willingness and conceived loyalty. The block manager's office. The duties of the block manager were distribution of supplies and materials, handling of the mail, and general maintenance and appearance of the block. The block manager was not much more than a messenger for the administration. It was one camp, 36 blocks, over 10,000 people. 
They played baseball, they played basketball, they had swings, activity. This is personal mail. The service began in April of 1942 as a branch of the LA Post Office 220 miles away. It soon became a lifeline to stay in touch with the loved ones, receive mail order packages, and find jobs outside of camp. Thank you to all the people who shared personal stories with Manzanar National Historic Site through oral, oral histories, photographs, diaries, and more. Without this generosity, the barracks exhibits would not have been possible. It says you're just in shock because you had never lived like that before. But when you're there, you just adapt yourself to the conditions that you're in. And there are not pleasant conditions, but there isn't anything else you can do. Signs up where the buildings used to be. It says building two, building three, building four, all the way down the line. Children loved sports. Here is a basketball court. It looks to be full length. So inside of the barracks, they've got it all set up the way that it was. And it is blistering hot in here. And they would put up a, a blanket in between and just use clothespins to hold it up there. And that would be their own little private room. Set up with games and a hot plate and beds. They called it the Tar Paper City. Hand wash station. Okay. Nothing in between, no privacy. It's just go. And then, of course, women always have to have more than men. <laughs> Imagine you're taking showers with strangers and sitting on a pot with no partitions. It is a bit embarrassing. It was very smelly and dirty and so close that they almost touched each other. It was a very humiliating experience for all. At that point, it must be hard to imagine that you're in America. With a little small dividing wall, that's it. Here's a perfect picture of the wind in the desert and the way that it was. Visitor center is. It's the only building that was left out here. And they uh, redid it for the for the visitor center. This here, the cement slab, was your laundry room. I don't know how many people would be doing their laundry, but I imagine there was quite a few with ten over ten thousand people. And you have up here the ironing room. Looks like you would step down and step in on this slab. I see a step on the other side. There's a fire hydrant out there. And here is the old board truck. This here, I'm 
walking to was Mess Hall of Manzanar. So this is where the families were fed. Everyone had to eat and it was a round the clock task for four years to make that happen. So this was sustaining a city of over 10,000 people. Some of the key areas used to produce store and store and distribute the Manzanar food. And then there's a good map showing where we are right now. You can still see how big it was. It's crazy. Here's your come and get it. They had the old farm style alarms where they'd beat the steel. And if you wanted to know the time, they were very accurate. Five in the morning. Why? All this humdrum would come for Japanese to start breakfast. But the meal hours were breakfast from 6.45 to 8, lunch from 12 to 1, and supper was 5.30 to 6.30. The bell rung, it was just like normal. Hurry up and wait. <laughs> Hurry up and wait described the daily life in Manzanar. The food, I can't remember if it was good or bad, who was only three when she arrived to meet Manzanar. I just remember that we all go had to go when the bell rung. And this is where the mess hall was. And then each area would have a mess hall. And in the mess hall, there were just picnic tables built of what it was really like. In a nice little wood structure. Looks like they would also use the, the mess hall for dancing and entertainment times. And wash your hands. And here's the actual kitchen. Wow. Here's the bowls, plates. Salt and pepper. All your mixing areas. That stove's pretty cool. <laughs> Oh yeah, that stove is very cool. You know, what I see is that cast iron skillet. I see the pots hanging from above. Cast iron top. Yeah. Soup ladles. Yeah. I see the pots hanging from above. Cast iron top to the thing. But they had a still under. They had a still underground. <laughs> Shh, wow. it's a secret storage. <laughs> it's a secret storage. <laughs> Can you see that down there? Yeah, secret storage. And here's your sink for washing them dishes. Working around the clock. Sir, seven o'clock in the morning. Dinner will serve. 5.30 p.m. Wow. They might have a day for the week. Here's the work around the clock. Exactly how it used to begin. From the eggs at 3 in the 3.30 in the morning, lunch at noon, and hopefully at night at 8 p.m. in the mess hall, you might have a dance, a movie, or a meeting. The largest workforce. More than 1,100 mess hall workers made up a third of the Manzanar workforce. Average mess hall staff included one chef, one time checker, seven waitresses, three cooks, four cooks helpers, 11 kitchen helpers. After it was all over with, parting again was a very sad thing. It was sad to become 
come here to begin with. And then after they had all made friends with each other, it was sad to leave too. Here is making mochi, mochi. Some mess halls hosted traditional mochi suki ceremonies for New Year. Soaked rice overnight, cooked it the next morning. Two people on a team would then pound the rice into paste. And then as one wheeled person wielded the mallet, the other turned and wetted the paste. Others formed the paste into the mochi cakes or mochi. Here's how they would make it. And they'd all gather around. And here's the actual wine, half a wine barrel that they would use. Okay. But then this would be one family. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. They made a few improvements, put up some drywall as time went on. So it wasn't just open. They didn't finish off the drywall, they just nailed it up there. But then this would be one family. Yeah. Okay. They've got a lot of things around here that tell the stories. 1943, the year of decision. Like, who has the right to question our loyalty? And then what happened was, is if you did not agree with it, then it was so long, Thule bounds, and you would be sent to the Thule's. There was very little normal school equipment available for the children, but they attended school on a daily basis. The teachers were mainly volunteers from within the camp. A lot of the chairs and tables were made by parents of the so here was where they washed their hands, and here was where their duty. They did their duty. So we're out here driving the auto tour, which uh, it says no driving off of the pavement. But Let's see. Here's as we drive the auto tour, there are signs that tell. In this whole field. This was all the baseball fields. That was the baseball field? Yeah. Baseball field around in there. Yeah. And all they had was pieces of wood that they cut into the the shapes of the bases. I saw it in the museum. It was, I mean, how can you slide on that? <laughs> We're at one of the far ends of the, of the spectrum here, the, uh, of the Manzanar camp. And you can see the buildings way off there in the distance. Those were the buildings, the barracks that we were in. And this would have been all barracks all the way out here. All the way out to this area. The Manzanar Cemetery is at the far back end of the property. And from the placard that we've seen previously, it's uh, 150 people that have passed in this man. This is a monument in the cemetery to those that died at Manzanar. And as you can see, the people have left tokens of condolence. Condolences. This is a barbed wire fence along the back side of the, the camp. And the people would not go beyond the barbed wire fence in fear that the soldiers would shoot them. They would only go for the cemetery area. 
and there in the background you can see the more bob barbed wire fence that they were not allowed to pass again for fear that they would be punished by the soldiers they made the camouflage that would go over your aircraft to keep it camouflaged so they were weaving for the war right. they, made, they made the camouflage nets that were put over the airport runways so that the airports would not get bombed the pay was $16 a month and she says we certainly earned it as we took pride in our work interestingly after I finished college many years later I became a weaver and it might have been because I enjoyed weaving the camouflage nets. The Manzanar War Relocation Center. Military police. Camp speed 20 miles per hour passes revoked for violation by the Manzanar Police Department. Stop. Mil military police. If you enjoyed our vlog, please subscribe and ring that notification bell and give us a like it lets us know you care and we'll see you on the next one bye, bye.